Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. This video is on how to get the achievement Curse of the Drinking Class. Now, for most people, including myself, this was a little frustrating to figure out how to do and some of the explanations online were not the best. The one that I found that worked best is I went with the apocalypse scenario, which I, I, I'm just winging it. I decided to try it because it sounded interesting that you actually start off in the modern era. You want to choose the Americans because the factories produce triple during the modern era. So since you're already there in the modern era with the apocalypse scenario and you can only win by a domination victory, it makes it really easy to just focus on researching the technologies that are required to meet the end goal of getting Curse of the Drinking Glass achievement. First thing you're going to do as soon as you load up the map is you're going to want to look around. You're going to want to pan the camera to find out if there's an area on the board that has at least four or more mountains. And I look around and oddly enough, I actually started off right by a nice line of mountains. Not exactly the best, but it's enough for me to attempt to get the achievement, Curse of the Drinking Class. And you need about four or more mountains because when you have four or more mountains together usually what happens is there's a lot of like you know there's foliage and forests around it and hills that will help you to get enough production for the 200 plus production around for the achievement curse of the drinking class now i've never played the apocalypse scenario until now but right off the bat, you can start researching some of the technologies you need for industrialization and the communism government for the increased production. So I started researching steam power, as you saw. Um, I don't have communism as an option, and I still have to research some of the, the pre-requiring technologies for it. It also does help to save frequently. You know, Create multiple save states as you progress in case you make a, a terrible mistake. But do make sure you know, that you are playing as the American civilization and that there is four or more mountains clustered together. Because usually when there is the four mountains clustered together, since you have all the hills and the world forces around it, you will you know, almost guaranteed get the achievement after you build some workshops, the iron mines, factories for boosting your production. Um, at the moment, I, I, I'm not. I'm setting my cities to boost science so I can research the technologies that I need. Because otherwise it was saying like, you know, plus 20 turns default to research some of them. And that's just really, it's a waste of time. It's completely unacceptable. This is, this is the modern era. Moving my riflemen around, trying to explore the area that I'm set up on. You know, it looks like I'm on, you know, peninsula pretty much isolated so I, I just want to make sure that that is true that I'm not gonna like get attacked by some adjacent city that's just right by me nut the butt I got some barbarians right there moving my riflemen around I'm gonna spend a lot of time just ending turns Most, actually I'm gonna waste a lot of turns while exploring. You know, that's another reason why the save frequently is, you know, if you do make a mistake or you make a bad move that, you know, cost you like five turns that you can do something more efficiently, then do it. Reload that save state. For me, I, I only made a couple saves here, explored around, wasted a lot of time that if you at least learn from my mistake, it will most definitely save you a lot of time. All right, so I'm making a settler now because I want to build a city right by those mountains. And I should have probably rushed the settler sooner, but I was just still, you know, grasping where I'm at on the board, checking things out, retardedly moving my rifleman around, <laughs> wasting turns. You see, I mean, my riflemen are going back and forth like, idiots you know, I see you know, there is a nearby you know, civilization so I'm going to want to move my rifleman over there to defend that bottleneck I'm actually going to lose temporarily my Detroit city but I'll take it I'll take it right back 
Yeah, the horsemen that come from the uh, northeast. All right, so I need industrialization and I need the railroad technology. So I'm gonna start working on industrialization because it'll allow me to build factories to triple my production. Lost Detroit. Of course, everybody's pissed off and yelling at me. I'll take it right back with my rifleman, no problem. Nothing to cry about here. I'm gonna make my rifleman here into an army in a second. Another thing that's nice about the apocalypse scenario is there is a lot of technology that you already have access to. There's a lot of different of the wanders that you can build. Um, you also have, well, as you can see, you have a lot of more advanced units, such as the knights instead of horsemen. Unfortunately, if you were playing on a higher difficulty, then things could be a little bit more technical or... Not a smooth going. Overall, this took less than half an hour to unlock the Curse of the Drinking Class achievement. And I'm just going to have my rifleman there set up as a defense on that bottleneck. So if any units start, any ground units come over, I'm going to take them out. My other cities are more so focused on science, just for getting those technologies. You know, there's only a handful that you actually need when playing on the apocalypse scenario. Which is actually really wonderful. It saves you a lot of time instead of if you loaded up single player, new game on Chieftain difficulty, just, you know, vanilla settings. Probably take you, I don't know, maybe two hours to get through it get to the point where you're going to be able to produce enough production resources for the achievement. It's another reason why it makes the achievement frustrating is, you know, you find yourself at that end game scenario, but you're not quite able to get the achievement at that point because you find that there's not enough hills. Uh, you only had like three mountains and it's just like, ah, that tease like dangling in front of you. It's like, you want these? You want this? Well, you can't have it. Making a couple more riflemen. I want to have a second, a second rifleman army just in case. I also muted the uh, the advisors in the audio settings. Just so freaking annoying listening to that Charlie Brown dialogue. All right, rushed my settlers finally. I really should have built my settlers sooner. Just used burn the gold to get that city over there. Because the sooner you get it started, the sooner you get the 200 production and you get your achievement. Probably even get it less than... You might be able to get it around 15-20 minutes if things go well. Assuming, like, in this scenario, you know, I'm right by the mountains that I need for the achievement. Sometimes the game will throw you a curveball and... You know, you won't have the mountains by you, it'll be on the opposite side of the board, or there won't be enough mountains for you to go to it, go for the achievement. If there isn't enough mountains, just restart, reload, you know, and try again. You, you want to be able to find a, a good cluster of mountains. So, this is my city that's going to be going for the achievement, naming it New York. Gotta love New York. All right, so I got my New York City up. Comes with a free rifleman to defend it, which is great. And another nice thing about how it worked out with this playthrough is this location of New York, my city, it's, you know, I'm able to get some food for population growth. The science is okay. Preferably, I'd rather be in an area that I can have more population growth, more production, but it works. I end up getting 202 on the dot um, production a turn. Just enough for the Curse of the Drinking Class achievement.
Now, Washington is also, I'm going to rearrange my workers to use it as the city that I use to funnel, potentially funnel settlers to New York. Because what usually happens when you have a city by that many mountains, there's usually almost no population growth whatsoever that you're forced to then travel settlers from another city to the city that you want to go for the achievement with. Which it's also good to point out that you might want to go with the Republic government early on for a while to get those settlers over there for a period of time. Yeah, I really don't need any more riflemen, so I'm going to build... I'm going to do a barracks. Just in case in the future I need to build any offensive units. Try to move a settler over to New York now. Domination victory really is not difficult on Chieftain, so... If, for example, you haven't won with the Americans yet, or even have gotten your domination achievement yet, you can then... You know, whatever your closest city to the opposition would be, I would then recommend, you know, building a barracks on it, and it will be your 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 point to funnel all your attacking units across the board. Highly recommend knights, tanks, or even you know the flying fortress bombers from the American civilization are great for just sweeping the board. I gotta love all these threats. I, li I like the attention. I don't even know what they're complaining about. They're not even remotely near me. Nor am I attacking them. As you see, I'm just skipping turns, trying to speed things along to get my stuff going. Courthouses is one of the things that you're going to need. You're going to need a workshop, you're going to need the factory. I have to build all those because they help with... The courthouse just expands the area of land and the amount of tiles that you're able to use for resources. Workshops, spruce production, same thing with the iron mines that you're going to get from the railroad technology. It just allows you to, you know, boost production from um, mountains. I'm going to use this great person that showed up to blitz through and quickly research communism just to save myself some time instead of waiting that extra like 12 turns that I had left. You know, this is sort of about accomplishing the end goal which is curse of the drinking class achievement in a timely fashion you don't want to be spending like hours on end trying to figure it out just to you know you know come flat faced into a dead end saying uh well you're only able to produce 198 and there's no other way you're going to boost that extra production value so it just sits in front of you and teases you so i'm going to work on the railroad now it says it's going to take seven turns it's not too bad I need to start working on some of the production stuff. I started researching the library just because I wanted to boost my science more to research the technologies a little bit more quickly. This run would have taken probably less than 20 minutes if I just solely focused better on the researching of technologies and boosting my science and also getting that fourth city up by the mountain sooner would have helped you know shave some minutes off of this but i just I, I i just winged this level i've never played this scenario the apocalypse so i didn't know that you know you could just drop right in the middle of the modern era instead of starting you know bare bones on a fresh save state Need the courthouse. Need the factory. I also got enough gold that I can start rushing some of these things. That Once I get the railroad technology that allows me to have the iron mines, 
then I'm going to switch my science over to from science production over to gold production because these remaining technologies I don't need. You know, most of them are military technologies for building tanks, bombers, etc. to go on the offensive for the domination victory, but I really don't care. I'm, I just want the the curse of the drinking class achievement. So now I can build the iron mine, I can build factories, I can build a courthouse. I'm going to use my gold to rush it as you can see. So now my reduction the hammer represents, you know, your production. So it's up. I got 24 production now. Working on my courthouse, just skipping turns. Starting to switch my cities over to gold production. So allow me to build roads, rush buildings. Technology doesn't matter anymore at this point. I basically have everything I need for the Curse of the Drinking Class achievement. Got my courthouse now. So you can see it significantly expanded the area in which I'm able to move my workers to. And one of the things that I did in my first video, but I didn't mention any commentary with it, is I needed to go to one of my other cities that moved some of the workers away so I could occupy the hills that I wanted for production. So in a couple of turns here, I'm going to be going to my Detroit city. I'm going to manage my workers to get the workers away from those hills adjacent to the mountains. I need to move them away so I can put workers from New York over there for that increased you know, production points. Factory is done. Now I'm up 121 production. Get the workshop up. Rushed it with my gold. Now I'm 153. Just seeing if I can like manage my workers to get that. That extra 47 I need to go. So now I'm starting to build wanders because there really isn't much I can do with the, you know that 150 production. Build my wa my uh, road to Washington. See, I'm using my gold to just rush the production of some of these buildings. Got home. That's just the achievement for building a <laughs> a wander. done I can use more tiles so I'm setting my Washington City to be pure population growth that way when I build settlers I can just funnel them over to New York got my road built that's good Building a couple of filler buildings that will just help me in the meantime. Basically everything getting built instantly on a single turn. But I still need a little bit more population than just nine. Don't worry about your technology at this point. Once you're able to get the, once you have the technologies that you need, 
you know, to build factories, iron mines, you know, the communism government. You're you're set. You're good. It's basically all the technologies that are required for maximizing production. Now I'm going to customize, move some of my workers away from those mountains. That way my New York City can use those tiles to boost production. Build a market, doubles my gold production. As you see, everything's producing gold. Now I've got to customize my workers to go over on those hills in the back there. Close, but not quite there. I need just a couple more settlers, boost my population to use some more of those tiles. The hanging gardens is what helps this. Gave me the population that I need. So now I need to manage my workers again to reach that 200 plus production per turn. As you see at the default, it's only 198. So I need to go down the custom to make the adjustments. Bring back to your city. And you, if you take a worker off the tile and let them sit in your city, they actually will boost overall percentages. So as you can see, I brought a couple workers back and I'm over 200. I'm at 202 for the Curse of the Drinking Class achievement. I want to thank you for watching the video and I hope that you liked it. And it was a little bit more informative and allowed you to be more knowledgeable of what you need to get the achievement and save you some time ultimately. These are the buildings I had in my New York City. And thank you very much for watching. Enjoy. Magic Bananas. If you'd be so kind, please leave a like. Thank you again.